Just like you guys, every day I wake up and I turn to the right side of the bed and hope there would be an elf girl right beside me rather than my alarm going off. But we all know that's never going to happen because they're not real. However, this video can fulfill that emptiness inside of you. Because that's literally what this manga is about. Yep, Recap Haven here. Back at it again with more diabetes-worthy rom-com manga that'll make you feel super single while giving you guys the most non-degenerate commentary on Earth. And introducing our newest guest today, we have an elf girl. All right, now let's all calm down and put it back in our pants because we gotta do a quick rewind to know what in the Harry Potter sh did our boy do to be able to wake up next to an elf girl. Kitasi Kazuhiro is a normal office worker, but whenever he sleeps, he gets isekai'd in his dream and he meets his friend, Mary the Elf Girl. He invites her to explore a dungeon with him, and in return, he'll give her his bento. They arrived, and midway through exploring, Mary just couldn't hold it in anymore since she was just dripping wet for this bento, so they had to stop and she ate the bento. They went back to exploring and they find a lizard man who's Kitasi's friend, and he warns him to not go near the dragon since it's laying its eggs. And what did our boy do? He went near the dragon. Suddenly the dragon woke up and their exit gets blocked and since the dragon's level is over a thousand, they have no chance of fighting. It's like going to fight the final boss before you completed all your quests. So the dragon burns the both of them, but it's nothing to worry about since if he dies in his dream, he'll just wake up. Kitase turns to his left and he gets shocked because every guy's dream just came true. There's an elf girl in her birthday suit sleeping right beside him. Mary gets confused on what happened. Kitasi looks away and asks if she's fine, because after all, they were burned alive. Mary gets confused on why he's looking away, and she realizes that her bare fun size milkers are out. She quickly covers herself up and tells him to bring her some clothes before he explains himself. Kitasi went out, brought some stuff, and came back. He sees Mary looking out the window like she's Rapunzel waiting to be rescued. She asks if he's mega rich since he lives in such a tall building. Mary gets super excited since everything is so different from where she came from and everything is so developed. She points to the sky tree and asks if a high-ranked wizard lives there. Katasi then suggests he'll show her around the city. She gets excited and went in to hug him. Katasi starts blushing since her blanket came off during the process. She blushes and covers his eyes. Mary went to put on her new clothes and Kitasi is cosplaying Sherlock Holmes as he tries to figure out how did she end up here. He then came to the conclusion that it's probably because he was hugging her as he was dying, and maybe that's why she teleported here with him. Mary got out and she's happy about her new clothes since she don't gotta be walking around with them 200 pounds armor anymore. She then asks if it's okay since these clothes must be pretty expensive. Katasi tells her not to worry since it's worth it because she looks cute wearing it. She smiles and Katasi suggests he eat her out. I mean, he'll take her to eat out today. They got ready to leave, but Katasi stops her and explains to her that since elves do not exist in this world, she would have to cover her ears. She puts on her beanie, and as they're about to leave, Katasi asks, why is she so laid back about everything? Because after all, she did suddenly teleported to a random place that she has no clue existed. Mary tells him not to worry, because after all, she's super excited right now. They got in the car and she starts freaking out since she's never been in one of these before. Kitazi has to explain to her what a car is so she would get on. He explains to her that Japan is very different from where she's from since they don't got to be fighting slimes and goblins and magical dragons. They arrived at the restaurant and they have to take their shoes off. Mary starts freaking out thinking someone might steal it from them. But once she walks in, she gets surprised by how different it is from where she's from. Kitase starts ordering, and the waitress looks at Mary. She then smiles and tells her to enjoy herself. Mary gets surprised and asks him what did the waitress say to her. Kitase then realizes that he's been talking to her in elf language so she doesn't understand Japanese. He tells her that the waitress is fascinated by her cute looks, that's all. Mary asks him to explain what is going on. And why does she have no memories after being attacked by the dragon? And why does he look so much older? Kitasi explains to her that every time he sleeps, he dreams. 
and all the times he spent with her was all in his dreams. So when he woke up with Mary beside him, he was super confused, since it means that the world that he thought is a dream is actually another world. He continues and tells her that if he sleeps or die in his dream, he'll wake up. But since this time he died with Mary in his arms, it resulted in him teleporting her to Japan. Mary starts freaking out since by what Kitasi said, it means that she's dead. Kitasi tells her that might not be the case, since if she sleeps here, she might be able to wake up back in her world. And for his age, he hypothesized that it's probably because he only age when he's dreaming that's why he looks so young in her world. He then reveals that he's 25. Mary freaks out and says it's fine since he seems more reliable as an adult. Just as she's about to continue, their food arrived. Kitasi suggests they continue their conversation later, since eating tempura is definitely more important than knowing why she suddenly teleported to another world. Mary tries thanking the waitress, but since she speaks ancient elf language, the waitress couldn't understand a thing. Kitasi then translates it for her. Mary takes a bite of the tempura, and it's so tasty that she just can't stop shoving lengthy, crunchy tempura in her mouth, but she was hesitant on the sashimi since they're raw. Kitase explains to her that the sashimis are absolutely goaded, so she has to try it. She dipped it in sauce and ate it. Her eyes started glowing like she's been enlightened. Kitase suggests they try sushi next time since she loves fish. She grabs his hand and tells him that that's a promise. They got up to pay for the food, and Mary asks him how to say thank you in Japanese. Mary repeats what Kitasi says to a waitress, and she is absolutely flustered to hear it. Kitasi then shows her the cherry blossoms and welcomes her to Japan. She smiles, and Kitasi starts blushing. Mary grabs onto his arm, and they both walk around while admiring the beauty of the cherry blossoms. They got back home, and Kitasi asks if she wants to take a bath. She saw the water running, and she starts freaking out, thinking it's some kind of magic. Katasi then hands her packets of bath salts. She starts sniffing them, and she picked one. She got in the bathtub, and oh man, those might be some fun-sized milk blasters. But at the end of the day, milkers are milkers. She recalls the moment she asks Katasi, what would she do if she can't get back to her world? Katasi then suggests she lives with him. She starts blushing and thinks that maybe it'll be wonderful if that's the case. She got out of the shower and her eyes instantly lighten up as she smells the food Kitasi is cooking. She looks at the food and says it's going to be tasty. Kitasi tells her to take a seat, and once the food arrives, Mary's eyes start glowing as she sees how good the food looks. And oh man, even I'm drooling just seeing this. And usually I only drool when I see hot anime girls that'll step on me. Mary digs in and tells him that it's absolutely amazing. She then asks him if he's able to bring anything over to the other world aside from bento and tea. Katasi explains that he has tried bringing flashlights and watches, but they can't be brought over. Mary gets confused and asks what a flashlight is. Katasi got up and flashed Mary, and no, it was not by taking off his pants. Katasi guesses that maybe things related to technology and stuff are not allowed to be transported with him, Mary finds this interesting, and Katase downplays himself, saying it's not a very useful skill, since bro can only bring over food. Mary denies this, and says that maybe someone is controlling it. And if that's the case, then there's a reason she was brought here. Eh? She then asks, could it be that Katase has some kind of mission? Eh? Our boy gets confused and explains to her that he's never thought about it, since he only focuses on slaying slimes, goblins, and p she continues to ask if he ever did anything to trigger his mind into dreaming about traveling to the other world. Our boy says he has no idea. Katasi then asks, what are they going to do if he's able to bring her back to her world? Since when they wake up, they'll be in the same place that they left. They try coming up with plans to survive, but there's no hope. Katasi asks if Mary knows anything about the dragon's personality, because Bro is trying to talk his way out with a flame-spitting dragon. Mary explains that the dragon once turned into a human and entered the capital. Katasi gets excited since she might be able to tell him more about this dragon. But she reveals that the dragon did absolutely nothing at the capital. They both get ready to sleep, and Mary rolls around the bed getting all comfortable. She then looks at Katasi and tells him to come. Katasi took a big gulp, and he came. They hugged each other, and Katasi suggests they get a bit closer since he's trying to get into the same posture as back then. He demands for Mary to come, 
They both look at each other's eyes and they came on each other. Honestly, huge props to our guy for being able to sleep in this position. Because if this is me, there'll be an unnecessarily huge amount of red blood cells flowing down to my lower body, and in nine months there'll be a little half-elf, half-human running around. Kitasi starts falling and fortunately it worked. They're back together. The dragon saw this and starts attacking them again. Kitase grabs onto Mary's hand and starts apologizing to the dragon, explaining that he just wanted to see its eggs. Kitasi then offers a beer as an apology, hoping it'll calm the dragon down. The dragon goes in to take a sniff, and it compliments Kitase for knowing the language of lower dragons. The dragon then says that if Kitase and Mary reveal how they're still alive, it'll spare their life. So Kitase and Mary tell the dragon about their entire situation, and it allows them to see its eggs. The dragon calls them weird for wanting to see its eggs. It then says that there's also someone who was able to live in dreams like him. The dragon reveals that it's taken a liking to Kitasi and asks him what else is he hiding since there's another smell other than alcohol. Kitasi tells the dragon that it's his Katsudan. The dragon says talking in this form is difficult, so it starts doing some magical stuff that personally I'd be terrified of because it looks like it's about to drop some massive volcano explosion that'll make the human race go extinct like we're the dinosaurs. But turns out it's a human, and even better is that it's a dragon girl. Okay, now that I see her, the only thing that's going to go extinct is my yogurt blaster ammunition. Because oh my. Now personally, I don't mind myself some dragon mommy waifu, I can't lie. She's known as a draconian. She's born from the dragon's core, and her kinds are really rare. She demands Kitasi to give her his drink and food, but Kitasi says that's not part of the deal. She gets frightened and tells him that, in return, she'll give them one of her scales. Since Mary wanted one of these scales, Kitasi accepts her offer. She starts shoving Katsudan in her face, and Kitasi asks if she would like some beer too. Kitasi pours her a glass, and she chugs it and thinks that it's amazing. Mary asks Kitasi what deal did he make with her since she can't understand dragon language. He reveals that she'll give them a scale for a bento. Mary gets shocked because the scale is worth so much more compared to a bento. It's like buying two supreme pizzas from Papa John's with 10,000 bitcoins. They look over to the dragon girl and she's in despair that all the food is gone. Kitase offers her another one and she instantly takes it. And in return, she rewards them with a rock. She believes that humans like them. She explains that the rock is soaked in her blood. Kitase explains this to Mary and she gets stunned. She then tells Kitasi to trade all his bentos for that rock. The deal went through and Dragon Mommy tells him to come back sometime and also bring four more bentos along the way. They leave and Mary explains that the dragon's blood is said to be able to cure any illnesses and everyone wants to have their hands on them. Kitasi suggests she sell it or share it with a sick person. Mary says that's a great idea if they want mercenaries from every nation to hunt them down like they're John Wick. Because if they do sell it, words will be spread and everyone would want to know where they got it from. She puts it inside Kitasi's bag and tells him that they'll come up with what to do with it once the magic dragons hatch. They got out, and Kitasi asks, where is she going to stay tonight? Mary says that's not a problem since she'll be going back with him, and she'll ask him to teach her some Japanese afterward. Kitasi smiles, and the scene switches to an animal person looking at the moon. We get introduced to this animal-like creature. Bro got the tiger stripes, big ears, and rabbit legs. I don't even know what's happening here. And the grandpa is even more confusing. He looks like if Master Shurfu and Splinter had a baby. The grandpa asked if anyone spotted him. He said nope because he made sure to hide in the moonlight before coming here. These species are called the Nico tribe, and they're incredibly weak. And since they can be used to refine magic catalysts, humans are chasing after them. Grandpa hands him a magic stone from their tribe. He tells him to treasure it since not many of them are left because they were robbed by humans. The little animal guy then went to sleep, and outside their home there's people who spotted them. We get back to Mary and Kitase. Mary is studying her Japanese, and Kitase tells her that today they'll be having gyoza. He then asks if she's able to handle alcohol, to which she says no and says she'll have something mild. Mary then calls to Kitasi and introduces herself in Japanese. He gets surprised that she's already studying grammar, but she says, Nah fam, I'm not that smart. I just memorized the useful phrases first. 
They sat down to have some gyoza, and once Mary ate it, her face lit up and she starts having a breakdown due to how good it tasted. Honestly, someone tell our boy to stop isekaiing and go open up a restaurant or something. Mary then starts getting drunk from drinking apple juice, and she asks if it's true that Kitasi is level 72 in her world. Kitasi says it's true, and he asks her for her level. Mary tells him that she's level 27, and she starts getting embarrassed since it took her 70 years to reach it. Kitasi suggests he takes her hunting, since with her skill level, he thinks she could gain five levels a day. He said he'll fight the monsters, and once it gets low enough, Mary can deal the last blow and take all the EXP. Now if this were to happen to my League of Legends game, IPs will be getting dropped. Night came and they both got onto their bed. Kitasi recalls telling her that it'll take her at least 200 days to learn Japanese. But Mary says, you don't know me, son! And she tells him that she'll do it in two months. Kitasi gets happy hearing this but he wonders if Mary will even be able to stay with him for two months. And if she were to disappear, will he even be able to sleep again? They both woke up back to Mary's world, and today they'll be focusing on giving free XPs to Mary, and hopefully she can snowball and carry the game. To the ruins at Uja Peak, Kitasi said, and the scene switched to our little animal person being captured. Mary gets excited to travel to Uja Peak, but it's about two countries away. Kitase tells her to hold on and they fall into the underground world. He explains that this is one of his movement skills and it can only be used once a day. Mary looks at him and whispers to his ear to put her down. He put her down and they start looking at each other's stats and comparing them. Kitazi then asks if she would like a tour around Japan since there's a holiday coming up. Mary excitedly agrees, but she prefers to go somewhere close since she's still not very used to traveling by car. They arrived at Uja Peak. The place is famous for being able to mine magic stones, but for some reason, the magic stones suddenly became unharvestable, and the place became more and more abandoned. Kitasi starts geeking out over magic stones, but Mary couldn't care less since the heat is just burning her alive. Kitazi tells her to endure it a little longer since they're almost there. They walked in and they found the oasis. Mary saw this and she was ready to turn into Michael Phelps and start swimming in it but Kitase stops her since they're here for her to level up. Kitase spots a level 42 monster. He tells her to assist him when he gives the signal, and he jumps straight into the monster's face. Mary then summons her fire lizard. Meanwhile, Kitase is fighting some mutated giant lizards that looks like Triceratops. He makes sure to not one-shot them and make them low enough for Mary. He came back with a group of mutated lizards and leads them toward Mary. Mary's pets start spitting out fire, and Kitase jumps over it. All the monsters died and Mary receives all the EXPs. A group of people is seen spying on Kitasi and Mary. They explain that the monsters they just killed are pretty tough, and they saw Mary take them all out in one shot. They thought that this was really impressive. He then uses his detection skill and found out that there's a scale and the dragon's blood in Kitasi's backpack. His friends ask if they'll be able to steal it from Kitasi because he's much stronger than all of them, he says it's fine since they got the little animal person. Mary gets bummed out over the fact that before it took her years to gain one level, and now with Kitase, she's able to gain up to five levels in three hours. She felt sad that she wasted so many years. Kitase tries cheering her up. She also feels bad for Kitase since she's dragging him down because of how weak she is. Mary then declares that she'll become stronger and one day he's not going to know what to do without her. Kitasi tells her that they should start eating since he's getting hungry, and thought that she was so cute just now. They start eating, and suddenly our boy's passive ability comes into play since he feels like something is off. He turns around and sees the animal person holding the stone high above his head while saying, I am inevitable. The ground starts shaking and a giant sea monster appears. Honestly, this thing reminds me of Moisty Merman from Fortnite. The two starts panicking since there's no escape, so Kitasi decides to hug Mary, and they'll both go R.I.P. at the same time. They both wake back up in fear, and Kitasi hugs Mary. This guy is really just using any moment he can to remind me how single I am. Kitasi suspects that it's probably a bandit since they were tailing them once they entered the ruins. And Kitasi being a smart man, he decides to keep this as a secret from Mary. But they don't need to worry since when they die, their body just disappears so the bandit won't be able to steal anything from them. 
They got out of bed and since today it's Saturday, they both can enjoy their weekend. They stepped outside and touched some grass. Mary then sees a cat. She tries communicating with it and the cat touches her finger. She freaks out and wonders what she's supposed to do. She decides to start stroking the cat and she gets surprised by how soft the cat is. The cat is so cute that it's making her hand shake. The cat flips over and she starts rubbing its stomach. And then the cat walks away. Kitazi and Mary decides to visit the library for today. They walk in and Mary panics because the door just opened on its own. Kitasi suggests they head over to the children's section. Mary gets surprised that there's a section for children's books, since in her world, only 30% of the population can read, which are basically just nobles and mages, and for the other 70% of the population, their brains are smoother than Andrew Tate's head. She then came to the realization that Kitasi is looking down on her by bringing her to the children's book section, she yells at him saying that there's no way she'll be interested in children's books. But once she saw them, she was instantly captivated by them. She has the same reaction as me when I first saw an educational video that teaches you where babies come from. She gets fascinated by how colorful they are, and Kitasi asks if by any chance she's interested in them, but Mary denies it. Kitasi then shows her a book about a cat that sails around the world. Bro is probably searching for Vinland. Mary reveals that she wants to read them, but what if there's some characters that she doesn't understand? Katasi suggests they read it together on his bed tonight. Mary agrees, and Katasi says he'll borrow it. Mary gets shocked that they can borrow books, so she decides to run back and grab some more. She came back with a book about a frog, but she reveals that the first book is still her favorite since the cat looks exactly like the one she saw this morning. Okay. Mary might potentially be colorblind here because the differences between the cat in the book and the cat she saw in the morning are like day and night. Literally. They head over to the reception desks, and Kitase and the receptionist stops and looks at each other. Mary gets confused and wonders who she is. Kitase and the receptionist greet each other. Her name is Ichijo. She asks him who is the cute girl he brought along. Kitasi explains that she's a relative and she's interested in picture books, so he decides to bring her here. Ichicho looks at Mary and asks for her name. Mary starts speaking Japanese and introduces herself. Ichicho then greets her and calls her Mary Chan. She gets confused and wonders why she added Chan and thought that maybe she pronounced her name wrong. Kitase explains that they're just honorifics and Chan is normally used with cute people who are younger than them. Mary then calls Ichijo and ends it with Chan. She gets shocked and says that it's too much for her to be addressed like that. Kitase explains that it also troubles him that she does it unconsciously. Ichijo gets surprised and thinks that Kitase has already wrestled with Mary, who he introduced as his relative. She thought there's some sweet home Alabama action going on. But Kitase quickly explains that they have not done anything like that. Ichijo looks at Mary and she smiles and says it's better to keep their relationship the way it is. Kitasi blushes and agrees with her. Ichijo asks for Kitasi's address and realizes that Kitasi lives in the same apartment as she is. She then asks if it's all right for them to have a meal together someday. She reveals that she wants to get along with Mary. They exchange contacts and they leave. While Kitasi is cooking, Mary appears and asks him how does a CD work since he told her that there's a moving picture book in this thing, but when she looks at it she can't see any pictures. Kitazi apologizes for not telling her sooner, and he puts it in a CD player and turns on the TV. Mary gets shocked seeing this and thinks that it's some sort of magic. Then Kitazi goes back to flipping pancakes and hands them to her. She takes a bite and says that they're amazing. Mary asks Kitasi if it's all right for them to start from the beginning since there's some part she missed out on. Kitasi says sure, and he starts closing the curtains and turning off the lights. Our boy is setting the mood for some Netflix and chill action. They start watching it, and when the movie finished, Kitasi says that it was amazing, and suddenly Mary jumps on him and says that it was super interesting. Even though she wasn't really able to understand what they were saying, it still made her really happy after watching it. She then rests her body on top of Kitasi, and surprisingly, Kitasi is pretty calm about it. Honestly, Kitasi might be the least virgin protagonist we have seen on the Recap Haven channel, because if this was me, I'd probably explode in my pants just from her getting on top of me. Kitasi explains to her that Japan has many more cool shows, 
Mary gets excited hearing this and says she'll definitely learn Japanese one day. Mary then leans into him and says she's got a favor to ask. She asks if it's okay for her to watch it from the beginning one more time. She starts dancing in excitement and Kitasi went back to making dinner. All right, gotta make sure we add this one onto the just fucking fuck already genre. Our boy continues to cook, and this manga might just be a cooking manga, to be honest, because bro is infinitely cooking. Maybe he's actually going to master chef soon. Suddenly, the whole building starts shaking. Katasi panics and the earthquake stops. Katasi calms down and says, Yep, just another Monday in Japan, nothing to be worried about. But this was different for Mary as she came out wet and naked charging towards him. And no, she was not specifically wet at a certain spot, but just in general since she was taking a shower. She runs up to Katazi, and her milkers gets pressed against him. Okay, now, from the angle, it's almost like her jugs grew, because before this, it was definitely fun-sized, and now it's the premium medium size. She hugs him, and they both scream. Mary is screaming in fear that the whole building is moving, and our boy, too, is screaming in fear because his hips will also start moving if she continues to hold on to him. She asks him why did the whole building shake, and Kitasi blushes and tells her it's just an earthquake and it's nothing to worry about, and he tells her to put some clothes on. Mary gets confused, and she looks down. She starts blushing after realizing that she's in her birthday suit, so she quickly runs back inside the bathroom. Kitasi continues to blush, and he realizes that some of the water from her body is left on the floor. Now if this was me, there is only one thing we can do about it. Kitazi falls to his knees since all the blood flowed to the lower half of his body, making him stiff and it's hard for him to move. Mary came out, and this man Kitazi is still not done cooking. I mean, what is bro even making? He's out here looking like Walter White with the amount of time he spent on cooking. But on the real note, can the developers patch the infinite cooking glitch, please? Mary apologizes for what happened, and Kitazi says it's fine, and he gets on his knees and also apologizes to her. And finally, our boy can take a break from cooking because the food is finally finished. Mary looks at it and she eats it. Because what else was she supposed to do? Her tongue starts burning since the food is just too spicy for her. But she tries it again. And she says that it's actually good. Although it's really spicy, her hand just won't stop moving. And suddenly she realizes that if they sleep tonight, they'll be back in the desert with the monster. Kitasi tells her to not worry because he can now use his once-a-day long-range movement to escape. But he explains that sometimes it can't be used if it's in the presence of a great aberrant entity. For example, if our dragon mommy appears, he won't be able to use his travel ability. Kitasi then says that if it's the monster from yesterday, he'll definitely be able to use it. And he also wants to discuss about the half-beast child... He believes that the infinity stone that the child is holding has something to do with summoning the monster. Night came, and so will our boy tonight. He walks into his bedroom and Mary is waiting for him on his bed. Turns out she just wanted him to read her the cat book before they go to bed. He starts reading it to her and before he knows it, she has already fallen asleep. Katasi says goodnight and he went to bed. Can we all sign a petition for our dragon mommy to get more screen time please?